Hi folks and welcome back. In the last video I was discussing the process of translation and today I want to add to that by adding uh, talking about more evidence showing the impossibility of evolution from this process. And just to remind you the process of translation is where a messenger RNA molecule is translated by ribosomes into a protein. As I mentioned in the last video, and with the process of transcription and the structure of DNA, there are signals found in the DNA and the RNA base sequence patterns. Those signals tell the ribosomes various things, such as where to start translating, where to stop translating, and which tRNA molecules link to their specific amino acids to recruit when. And I've already talked a lot about patterns. Patterns tell us that intelligence and prescience were used in the design and creation of the given item, whatever it may be. And folks, this is called the design inference. It comes from the book, The Design Inference, Eliminating Chance Through Small Probabilities by mathematician and scientific philosopher, Dr. William A. Dembski. It explains the features of logic and reasoning involved in the detection of intelligence and design. Information-rich patterns tell us that someone with intelligence and prescience designed the information because such information does not result from randomness. Randomness cannot generate information-rich patterns. Randomness, which is the basis of evolution, is the opposite of design. Randomness does not create the organized, intelligent, logical, ordered, choreographed, information-rich patterns and structures that are the characteristics of design. Randomness, <coughs> excuse me, randomness does not result from intelligence and prescience as design does because it's random. In fact, Randomness doesn't even have the capacity to create organized, logical, patterned, um, choreographed, ordered, information-rich patterns and structures that are the characteristic of design. Characteristics. Let's get my grammar right. Characteristics of design. And the problem for evolution is that it's all based on randomness. Evolution claims that, the, that life originated from non-life through randomness. But intelligence produces information-rich systems, not, naturaliz not naturalism or randomness. And the process of translation is yet another example of information-rich patterns telling us that it was designed and created using intelligence and prescience. Without these signals and the countless more that we find through molecular biology, life could not exist or be duplicated. The ribosomes would never know where to start and where to stop translating or when and where to recruit which transfer RNA molecules. The chaperonins would never know how to fold proteins into their essential 3D structures. The cell would never know what to do with the finished proteins. Therefore, you must know the correct base sequence patterns that signal these events and interactions ahead of time in order to plan to strategically, intelligently, and intentionally use them exactly as required in the structure and essential functions of DNA in molecular biology. Without the ribosomes having and knowing the genetic code 
for the amino acids. The four bases in DNA are useless. Holding massive amounts of information in only the four repeating bases would be futile if you don't have the Rosetta Stone to decipher that information. The ribosomes would be useless if they were unable to pair the correct transfer RNA amino acid complexes with their appropriate three base codons. Without this critical function of the ribosomes, the language of DNA is no language at all. The amazing way DNA creates such an elaborate language in only four bases is meaningless without the ribosomes to translate it to the language of proteins. The ribosomes, their entire structure, which includes over 80 proteins and RNA molecules, and all their functions are an absolute requirement for the creation of proteins. Therefore, you must know the genetic code, the structure and function of ribosomes, all the genes required to create a ribosome, all the genes required to create the transfer RNA molecules, and how the transfer RNA molecules will complex with their respective amino acids ahead of time in order to plan to strategically, intentionally, and intelligently partner the language of DNA with the translating ability of the ribosomes exactly as required in the design and structure of and functions of DNA. To translate the genetic code, you must know not only the code, you, mu you must also know what it means. You have to have a complete understanding of protein biochemistry. You must know what proteins do. For the same reasons that I explained for DNA and its nucleotides, you must also know the structure and functions of each subunit of proteins, the amino acids. You must know how the structure of each amino acid functions. And remember, there are 20 essential amino acids. You must know the atoms required in the structure of each amino acid before you design a code that explains when to use which amino acid. You must know the properties of the atoms used in each amino acid and how they can interact with other atoms. You must know those interactions will cause the secondary structures, things like the alpha helices and the beta pleated sheets, the tertiary structures, how it's folded into its 3D conformation, and the quaternary structures, the protein subunits that get complexed together to form the final proteins. You must understand that the primary structure of a protein is important, it's, which is in the primary structure is its sequence of amino acids, but without the ability of the protein to fold into its higher order structures, its final 3D structure, the protein will not function. Proteins function similar to the way a lock and a key functions. Just as only the correct key will fit into a given lock and turn it, the 3D structure of proteins form locks and keys that will only fit and turn into the appropriate mate. Therefore, you must know all the chemical bonds utilized in proteins and where to use which ones. Just as I explained when I talked about the covalent versus the hydrogen bonds found in DNA. You must know the difference between the primary covalent peptide bonds and the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary bonds, the non-covalent, non-specific hydro, uh, hydrophobic interactions, and the non-covalent specific interactions, like ionic interactions, hydrogen bonds, the tight packing of side chains, van der Waals forces, 
and disulfide bonds. These specific and nonspecific non-covalent interactions are a requirement for the proper higher order folding of a protein. Without the proper folding and conformation, as I said, proteins cannot and will not function. Therefore, you must know all these things ahead of time, or the genetic code has no utility or function, and life ceases because you cannot make proteins exactly as they must be to function. You must know all these things ahead of time in order to plan to strategically, intentionally, and intelligently partner the language of DNA with the functionality and structure of proteins exactly as required in the design and function of DNA as the keeper and distributor of the genetic code and how to translate it. And let me remind you here what I explained in previous videos. One of the main reasons I spend so much time in previous videos explaining the extreme complexity and the intricate detail of DNA and its essential functions like transcription and translation, as well as the numerous components involved in all these processes, is because DNA nucleotides, RNA nucleotides, and amino acids will not self-assemble. As I already explained, you need each one of the several hundred proteins and RNA molecules that are involved in all these processes, or these processes will not and cannot happen. All these essential components are absolutely required. This is non-negotiable. Without all these components, the processes like transcription, translation, and replication, which, I'm, which is one that I'll tell you about next, will not and cannot happen. Without all these components, life will not and cannot happen. Life will not and life cannot happen because DNA nucleotides, RNA nucleotides, and amino acids must be assembled and linked together with chemical bonds by all the machinery we've discussed through these processes. All the data show this. And we're talking about all the data collected over the past, oh, I don't know, 70 years or so. All the data we've ever created show this. And without having all the molecules doing what they do to create DNA, RNA, and proteins, since none of these molecules would have or could have been around yet, the only option you're left with for the evolution of life to get started is for DNA nucleotides to self-assemble into DNA, RNA nucleotides to self-assemble into RNA, and amino acids to self-assemble into proteins. And not only that, they must self-assemble uh, self into functional and meaningful DNA, RNA, and proteins. So please get this, because this is critical. Evolution says that nucleotides and amino acids did something that they do not do. Evolution says the nucleotides and amino acids self-assembled, which is something all the scientific data show they do not do. Moreover, without nucleotides and amino acids doing something that they cannot do, evolution cannot happen. Without nucleotides and amino acids being able to self-assemble, evolution cannot happen. And please remember this quote that I shared with you previously. In a summary of the Fourth Congress of the International Society for the Study of the Origin of Life 
In 1983, Klaus Dost makes the following statement. For the first time, it has now been determined unequivocally by a large number of scientists that all evolutionary theses that living systems developed from polynucleotides, which originated spontaneously, are devoid of any empirical base. Folks, he's saying what I just told you. A large number of evolutionary scientists have jointly determined that there are no data, there is no scientific evidence to support that DNA and life itself could have originated spontaneously. Those are the data, and they know it, and they admit it. What he's saying is that no data exists to support any scientific theory of how DNA and then life came into existence. There is no evidence, no experimental data, no observations, no practical reason, and no explanation to support the origin and existence of DNA, RNA, and proteins via any scientific theory. And we learn that, and we know that, from studying the structure, functions, and processes of DNA in molecular biology. Furthermore, the evolutionists push that form follows function. From their perspective, this means that when a new function is needed to create a new aspect of a new species, Evolution will provide the new form to accomplish it. The required new function comes first in their logic, followed by the evolutionary process that creates the new form to meet the required function. For example, to become a bird from a reptile, you need wings. So evolution provides the wings. This is driven by survival of the fittest the form that gives an adaptational advantage wins out. The new forms of these new species survive while the other forms cease to exist as those species will perish. So, if it were the case where amino acids could self-assemble, why were ribosomes needed? Where's the form follows function here? We know for a fact that ribosomes exist and they're wholly responsible for the assembly of amino acids into proteins. So if proteins can auto-assemble, what was the evolutionary necessity to evolve ribosomes? What was the driver? What adaptational advantage do they provide if amino acids can assemble into proteins all by themselves? If it were true that amino acids can self-assemble, then there be no need for ribosomes. And by definition, evolution would have selected them out of the population. So this is yet another problem for evolution. Then this obviously also extrapolates to DNA and RNA, but I'm focusing on ribosomes and amino acids since we've been discussing the process of translation. But why would we need DNA or RNA if proteins can auto-assemble? Where's, fo where's the form follows function with DNA and the dogma of molecular biology that DNA is transcribed into RNA and RNA is translated into proteins? We know that DNA exists and it authors and directs the assembly of proteins. So if proteins can auto-assemble, what was the evolutionary necessity to evolve DNA as the author and director of translation? What was the driver? What adaptational advantage does having DNA author and direct translation provide if amino acids can self-assemble into proteins all by themselves? If it were true, that amino acids can auto-assemble, then there would be no need for DNA to author and direct it. And by definition, 
evolution would have selected DNA out of the population. Once again, this is yet another problem for evolution. And, yet again, we have more examples of irreducible complexity. And I'm going to end this video here, but come on back for the next one where I'll discuss the process of replication. And if you like what you hear, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, we'll leave the light on for you.